All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today I'm joined once again by Druzy. How are you, mate? Hi. Yeah. No, nah, doing well. Thank you, Jesse. Very excited for the uh, for the season to start, and we're starting today, baby. We are exactly. But first, before we get into the video, I do need to shout out our sponsor today, Manscaped.com. If you haven't already, go check out their website. You can get 20% off their ball shaving elite products. Uh, we're using the code True Footy 20, all caps. All one word. They've been helping us out through a tough off season. Not a lot of views, Drew. There's not a lot of AdSense coming through, uh, but they've kept us afloat. So thank you very much. Shout out to the man then. Today, what we're going to do is revisit my draft series that I talked a lot about in the summer. I said I'm going to do a draft series all through summer. I think we did two to three videos over that entire period. So today we're back with the 2013 edition. Do you remember this draft very well, Drewzy? Um, no, I was a child. I was in year seven in 2013. Um, the year that Doc is on. Uh, one, <laughs> one, absolutely nothing as usual. But no, um, the 2013 draft, uh, through the re vigorous research that we've done, um, they are probably the best players in the comp right now. They're all hitting their primes around now, so it's very interesting to revisit it and see what order the draft is, uh, was in and how we would reshape that. Do you still have the Fremantle Dockers commemorative losing grand final jumper from 2013? No, and I saw so many people wear that, and it was very <laughs> embarrassing. Yeah, like you said, the 2013 draft is pretty star-studded, and they're around that sort of age where you can sort of make an assessment as to whether those teams drafted well. So today we're going to go through the top 10, started from the bottom, as Drake would say, going up to the top and working through the top 10 players if it was redrafted today. That's not the lyric. So first of all, Drews, why don't you start us off with Collingwood's pick 10. Pick 10 in the redraft. We've gone Darcy Byrne Jones. Now, as I said, these players are hitting their prime and Darcy Byrne Jones is a good example of that. Made All-Australian this year for the first time in a port side that finished first on the ladder. He was pick 52 in this draft which is nuts in hindsight, because he was an absolute steal, and he would have fit in at Collingwood with a big, filthy, dirty mullet. Um, but yeah, he comes in at pick 10. With pick 9, I'm going to say the Melbourne Demons select an Eagles player, and you can call to my Eagles bias here. Although Tom Barras is a player that has frustrated me for a while, I'm going to slot him into the top 10 of this draft, largely because I think key position players have a little bit of a premium on them, and he's, he's still a 25-year-old, and still with lots of football left ahead of him as well. The body of work he's put in for a young key defender has been really good. He's been good since really early. I think a lot of people don't realize how young he is because he was best 22 in basically his second season. He was pick 43 overall, so he was a massive bargain. He's an absolute linchpin in that Eagles defense. When he's on his day, he does have his down days as well, but he's in the Jerry McGovern mold. I know that when McGovern's out due to injury or whatever, that Brass is usually able to step up as well. Eagles have a stacked defense, so for him to be a best... 22 player in his second season. Pretty underlooked, obviously, because that is such a stacked defense. But if he was in another side, um, he'd be, yeah, the key defender probably. Sticking with bias, another Dockers player. Um, this is Alex Pierce. Pick eight, and we're going to send him to North Melbourne. I'm sorry, Alex, but it has to be done. <laughs> That's like the worst punishment you can get in football. <laughs> Getting sent to North Melbourne. <laughs> Rats! We love you, Coxen. Alex Pierce's career so far, he's been injured quite terribly all throughout. He uh, had a really bad leg break early in his career come back and just hit the ground running straight away. And then he's done his ankle since. He's, he's just bloody made of glass, pretty much. But when he plays, he is one of the best fullbacks in the comp, I believe. Nah, I agree. As a person who lives in WA and sees Alex Pierce maybe a little bit more than interstate fans, I do agree that he is... Uh, well, he's the best key defender in this draft crop and would definitely go top eight or so. Next up, I'm picking for the Brisbane Lions. With pick seven, I'm going to take a player that was much maligned in 2020, Ben Brown. Now, prior to 2020, which was kind of ruined by injury, he had three seasons in a row where he kicked over 60 goals. And if I'm not mistaken, over that period, he was probably the most prolific goal kicker out of anyone in the league. Um, he does get a bit of criticism for being a little bit one-dimensional. Maybe he needs the ball put to him, you know, right on his tits, so to so. say. That's yeah. not the expression. <laughs> no, it is, isn't it? It is, yeah, but not both his tits. Like, it's on the tit, you know what I mean? If you've got a big enough football, it covers both tits, doesn't it? Depends what angle you mark it at, I suppose. <laughs> in my opinion, it was a bad decision to trade into the Ds for, uh, I can't remember what it was in the end, but it was definitely under market value. I think he has a lot to offer and he would still go high if this was redrafted today. Brisbane have just signed a full forward or a key position forward in Joe Danaher. Um, and yeah, Ben Brown in that side, they wouldn't have had to do that. With pick six in the 2013 redraft, the Collingwood Magpies select James Sicily. Um, I don't know where he played, but that was the, that's how they announced the NBA draft, I'm sorry. <laughs> so he was pick 56, and he burst onto the scene quite quickly at Hawthorne land. So he was unlucky not to play in those premiership sides for Hawthorne, but, you know, in a final side, James Sisley 
would shine. And again, another play with the personality and looks to play at Collingwood. <laughs> it would be a good pick. <laughs> so yeah, on his day, one of the best intercept defenders in the league. Um, very unlucky to do an ACL this season um, in a struggling Hawthorne side. Next up, I've got the Gold Coast Suns on the clock with pick five, and they're going to take Zach Merritt, who was originally drafted by Essendon, of course. I think it was pick 26 back in the 2013 draft, and he was actually drafted to join his older brother, Jackson Merritt, which <laughs> some people might not even remember that Jackson was already at Essendon when they drafted Zach, and Zach obviously ended up being the much better player. He's averaged nearly 30 possessions pretty much every season since about his third year. He's been ultra consistent. And in 2020, I think he was a top three player for inside 50s and second overall for effective disposals. Really racks it up. Maybe didn't have the same impact per possession as some other mids, which is why he's not ranked higher, but he's still ultra consistent and probably one of the better players at Essendon. Well, you'd hate to go to Gold Coast during that time. So probably a blessing for him, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> Brother's a good bloke. Played at Peel. Oh, true. Yeah. Yeah, he's playing. I think he's still playing in WA. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think he's playing for Peel still. Um, but yeah, good bloke. Nice. At pick four, the Bulldogs select Charlie Cameron. Now, he's one of the most electrifying forwards in the competition. So, obviously, played for the Crows and learnt under Eddie Betts. And he's just as good as Eddie Betts, if not better. That's a bit controversial, maybe. But yeah, he's a modern-day electric small forward. Fourth best player in this draft. As a small forward, he kicked 57 goals in 2019. And that really cemented him as one of the league's best small forwards. So, yeah, we like Juggy. With pick three overall, St. Kilda are taking a player who originally went pick two in this draft, and I'm, of course, referring to GWS's Josh Kelly. He's a player that the stats probably don't really reflect his impact. If you look at it across the board, you wouldn't look at the stat sheet and think, oh, wow, this player is one of the best on the field. But he's such a classy, smooth-moving player, almost. I don't want to use the Pendlebury comparison because that gets overused, but he always looks like he has a little bit more time than he should with the mm. ball, and he's just so damaging with his ball use as well. One of my favorite midfielders to watch. Um, clearly below some of the other two, midfielders that will go one and two which we'll allude to nice. in a second but definitely still a potentially elite player if he really gets his momentum going at uh, pick two now pick one and two are very hard to uh mm. dip up between. this is a good debate in general I yes think. who should have gone pick one in the 2013 draft not this bloke we've decided it's paddy cripps he's gone pick two it's because gws had pick one and two obviously colton's captain one of the most electrifying players in the competition clearance beast goes forward and kicks bags yeah and he's really dragged colton to a shit period in their history but he's a shining light for their future Absolutely. Didn't quite have the year that he was capable of in 2020, which I think people maybe sort of mark harshly against him, but it does happen to the best of players, and he's been pretty on it since his first game, just about Paddy Cripps. So, yeah, he's an absolute star, and very unlucky not to go pick one. At pick 13 as well, just in hindsight, absolute steal. No, you're right, and that's a really good point, because Paddy Cripps was considered around a 25 to 30 prospect, and then Oof. Carlton sort of plucked him late, and people were questioning it, and it turned out to be an absolute bargain. Who does that leave coming in at the first pick? Luke J Dunstan! <laughs> <laughs> The real pick one, also joining GWS, so they could have had two absolute generation of talents here, but I'm going to go with the Bulldog skipper, Marcus Bontempelli. They cooked at GWS, you've, <laughs> you've cooked it, you could have had Crips and Bontempelli. True, and then they took uh, Tom Boyd, traded him, and then he won a flag for the dogs anyway, so the dogs are laughing in this year's draft. <laughs> That's unreal. So the Bont was pick four overall in the 2013 draft, and you have to say the dogs who had this pick obviously picked really well because we're redrafting at pick one. Some people might say he's pick two, but it's generally going to be one of those two. Uh, he's an oversized midfielder at about 193, 194 centimetre uh, midfielder who can also drift forward. I think the difference between him, Cripps, is possibly versatility. He can certainly impact forward, um, but also in, on top of winning clearances and stuff. He's always, like I just alluded to with Kelly, always got a little bit more time than you think. He's got a really penetrating left boot. The fact that he was best and fairest in a premiership year for the Dogs in 2016, and it was like his third season of mm -hmm. AFL, I think, I think that is pretty much the hardest accolade to top out of all this group. And therefore... I reckon he just goes pick one. Shout out to Lewis Taylor, who won the Rising Star this year. Yeah, which is just <laughs> ridiculous. Just recently, basically delisted and then shipped off to Sydney. So, yeah. yeah. That's stinky. Yeah. But um, yeah, Bond was second in that Rising Star race. He was mm. another player that hit the ground running. So for those playing at home, we will go through the Rising Star Award, which is quite funny to look back on. So Lewis Taylor won it in the closest ever count at the time by one vote over Bond and Pelly. Luke McDonald, who was a very solid player and probably go in the teens if it was redrafted now, uh, came third. James H., 
who's now at Fremantle, came fourth. It's weird to see how players like develop at different speeds. Like you've got like your James Aish, Lottie Collard, Jasney, Luke Dunstan in there, and then there's just like Paddy Cripps that just comes flying yeah. through. It's just yeah, different Je- race of athlete development. So to finish off the video, we'll just recap the top ten that we've gone with. We've gone with pick one, Marcus Bonds and Pelly before pick two. GWS snapped up Paddy Cripps pairing them up together which is just El Stanco as they say in Spain Josh Kelly was then pick 3 for the Saints before Charlie Capron joined the Bulldogs at pick 4 Zach Merritt was unfortunately banished to the Gold Coast with pick (laughs) 5 while James Sicily joined Collingwood Ben Brown goes at pick 7 to the Brisbane Lions Alex Pierce goes to North Melbourne, another El Stanko location. With pick nine, Melbourne jump on the key position talent, Tom Barras. And finally, with pick 10, Collingwood take the 2021 All-Australian defender, Darcy Byrne-Jones. But that's it for today's video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you check out my good friend Jeruzzi's YouTube channel. Also check out my second channel, Cole World. We've started to tick over the episodes a little bit more consistently now, getting regular podcasts out. So I'd appreciate you go check that out. And don't forget, our sponsors, Manscaped, you can get really good value on some great ball trimming products. Bye.